Vegetarianism has evolved over the centuries from a necessity into an option. Historically, vegetarianism was linked with specific philosophies and religions, or with science. Today, about 1 in 40 adults in the U.S., and about 1 in 25 in Canada, is a vegetarian. Vegetarian diets have evolved to include such new products as soy-based sloppy joes, chilies, tacos, burgers, and more. In addition, cookbooks that feature the use of a variety of fruits, veggies, and seasonings are enhancing food selections for vegetarians of all degrees. It's a popular way of dietary life among college students. I should know. Sometimes I go to the cafeteria and I get a salad, and maybe I put a little chicken in it sometimes, but for the most part I have an assembly of all sorts of varied things like beans, carrots, corns, with little to no dressing if possible. In response to this, dining services offer vegetarian products at every meal, such as pastas with meatless sauce and pizza. Plenty of teenagers are also turning to vegetarianism. Restaurants offer vegetarian meals in response to the growing number of its customers who want a vegetarian option when they eat out. Many customers cite health and taste as reasons for choosing veggie meals. As nutritional science has grown, new information has enabled the design of nutritionally adequate vegetarian diets. It is important for vegetarians to take advantage of this information because a diet of only plant-based foods has the potential to promote various nutrient deficiencies and substantial growth retardation in infants and children. Many vegetarians are very vulnerable to nutrient deficiencies in certain fields of their diet. An easy example to point to for many nutrient-deprived vegetarians is a lack of protein because protein is so easily obtainable from eating animals. There's a disease that comes with severe protein deficit, often accompanied by infections or other diseases, and it's called, uh, <clears throat> I pray I'm pronouncing this right, Kwashiorkor, which is a word from Ghana that means the disease that the first child gets when the new child comes. This sort of disease is most common in third world countries. A basic breakdown is that newborn infants can stop being breastfed at one or one and a half years of age because the mother has to accommodate a newborn child that gains preference for breastfeeding. The older child's diet devolves from human milk into starchy roots and gruels, which provide far less nutritional benefit and diminished protein density. Major visible characteristics include growth impairment, like around 60 to 80 percent of normal weight for their age, and visible fatty liver, which makes them look like they have a gut, even though they barely have enough weight to accommodate themselves. Back to the topic at hand, don't let nutrient deficiency get you down from becoming a vegetarian. People who do choose a vegetarian diet can meet their nutritional needs by following a few basic rules and knowledgeably planning their diets. Actually, my plate and the 2010 Dietary Guidelines for Americans emphasize a plant-based diet of whole grain, breads and cereals, fruits and vegetables. In addition, the American Institute for Cancer Research promotes the New American Plate, which includes plant-based foods covering two-thirds or more of the plate, and meat, fish, poultry, or low-fat dairy covering only one-third or less of the plate. Yeah, I wish that was the new American plate, but we're not seeing many changes in processed food plants or restaurant chains now, are we, people? <laughs> For the most part, though, although these recommendations do allow the inclusion of animal products, they're definitely more vegetarian-like than most North American diets. Of course, though, there are many different types of vegetarians, some more strict than others, but I'll just get into that visually for you right here. Plant sources of proteins can positively impact heart health in so many ways. First off, the plant foods we eat have no cholesterol or trans fat, little saturated fat. The major types of fats in plant foods are monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Nuts in particular are high in monounsaturated fat, which helps keep blood cholesterol low. Beans and nuts have soluble fiber, which binds to cholesterol in the small intestine and prevents it from being absorbed into the body. Also, due to the activity of some phytochemicals, foods made from soybeans can help lower production of cholesterol by the body. The effect is modest, about a 2-6% to drop. In 1999, the FDA allowed health claims for the cholesterol-lowering properties of soy foods, and in the year 2000, the American Heart Association recommended inclusion of some soy protein in the diets of people with high blood cholesterol. Some of the phytochemicals may help to prevent blood clots and relax blood vessels. Nuts are an especially good source of nutrients implicated in heart health because they include vitamin E, folate, magnesium, and copper. Frequent consumption of nuts, about one ounce of nuts five times per week is associated with a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. Moving on. The numerous phytochemicals in plant foods are thought to aid in preventing cancers of the breast, prostate, and colon. 
Many proposed anti-cancer effects of foods containing plant protein are thought to be antioxidant mechanisms. I'm barely scratching the surface of what it means to have a vegetarian lifestyle. I notice this video is dragging on a bit as well. If you'd like to hear more of what I know and can tell you of vegetarian habits or even vegan diet planning, just let me know in the comments. First and foremost, I'd like to explain and discuss antioxidants for you. Ask me anything else in particular and who knows, I may know, and then I may be able to answer that question. It's been me, 51st Sheep, and I bid you adieu. I don't speak.